This episode of Taproom Travelers is brought to you by Lazy Monk Brewery. My name is Amber Georgia Kopoulos. I am the operations manager and events coordinator here at the Raw Deal. Uh, my name is Ryan Verdon. Um, I am the uh, brewer, head brewer, uh, the only brewer. From making the beer to kegging it to uh, ordering ingredients, taxes, inventories, all that kind of stuff. So. The Raw Deal is a coffee shop in Menominee, Wisconsin. Um, we also have craft beer and we just started brewing our own beer here as well. We've always been really focused on quality ingredients, on offering something that nobody else in the area is offering, um, and really bringing this in as a community. And I think people gathering together over pints of beer is a, is a natural fit there. To love about it is that it really kind of felt somewhat like a public house. There's a lot of people, a big group, uh, who kind of consistently comes in and out of here kind of the concept of that like third place where it's not home and it's not work but it's that other place that that you kind of consistently go to and you see your neighbors and your friends and you talk about politics and get in arguments or you talk about sports or whatever and that, you know feels like you're walking into a friend's house more than walking into a, a tasting room or a brewery and that that's one of the things that I like uh, about coming here Julie um, trained for a really long time as a professional raw food chef. So she trained under a lot of big names and she's really kind of a wizard at what she does. Um, and the great thing about it is it's raw food, which there aren't a lot of other spots real locally where you can get it. Um, it addresses a lot of people with food allergies, but it's not exclusive. You don't have to eat just raw to be able to enjoy it. It just tastes really good. This building's a historic building. It's been here for over 100 years, and that's a big part of the appeal um, when the Federleys were gonna open the business. They were shopping around and, and really looking for a place that was part of downtown and had some history to it. Um, and they took a lot of care with renovating the space um, to keep it, you know, the floors were original floors. We're careful with the brick not to go in there with giant hammers, banging it up. Um, and I think that that kind of adds to the feel too. It used to be a general store, um, and so there's a lot of people in this community hundreds of years ago that this was a big part of their day-to-day -day life and it's kind of cool to be able to do that again with caffeine and beer. Some people say there's a ghost here. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her yet, but apparently a um, man who um, built the building built it for his daughter and her son and she kind of ran the business which is kind of cool now that the Federleys own it and the daughters are so involved in running it as well. Um, but yeah, people, there's a rocking chair upstairs. People uh, say have, has been rocking occasionally on its own and a few other little things. Uh, but there's been times where I, clo I close a lot and there's been times where I'm closing and this light in the stairway over here, uh, I shut it off because it's the end of the night and uh, I look down and I'm counting money at the end of the day for the till and uh, I look back up and it's on and I turned it off again and I did the same thing and it happened two or three times. Just little, little things like that. Um, I got involved uh, professionally here by just from coming in here. Got to know the management and the ownership. They learned that I homebrewed and uh, uh, at the time was working at Rush River. For a few years there was just kind of pipe dreams of, oh, it'd be a lot of fun to make our own beer here, and it could be really cool, and we could do this and that. And then after I graduated, kind of turned to a little more serious talk, like what would it actually take? And so, uh, you know, we ran a bunch of numbers and started 
you know, trying to kind of figure out batch sizes and how much we think we could make and stuff. And, that, and then it just exploded off of that. So. Uh, what we do is we do 10 gallons per batch. And we do two to three batches a day, depending on the beer, depending on the needs. Um, and we brew roughly, probably two times a week on average, sometimes more or less. Our system is this size because what we really wanted to strive for is to be able to kind of force ourselves to make beer more often and therefore have it kind of consistently and constantly being fresh. And in my other industry work, it's always, it was always kind of a big chore to work with the people who are selling your beer um, to push it and so it doesn't hang around on the shelves a long time. And especially here, when everything's un uh, unfiltered and unpasteurized, uh, and the goal then is that we want to bring you a as fresh a beer um, as you can get. Most of the, the things that are going on here at the raw deal are uh, are you know in a, in and of the the organic and the green and eco friendly uh, realm, and so that was kind of our first thought on beers. You know, doing all organic beers. Well, it, you know, there's uh, unfortunately the palette of what you're as a brewer, what kind of ingredients and options that you have for making beer are significantly less, and so ultimately it became let's do one flagship pale ale, and then. We thought it was important to not limit our options on 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 all of our beers, you know, because ultimately that's got to be the first priority. It started out with Driftless, um, which is our flagship beer. It's an organic pale ale. Um, that was kind of the the head runner right out of the gates. But right now, Scotch ale's kind of sneaking up there. But the pale ale, it's based off just a, a homebrew recipe that I've been doing pale ales and IPAs on for years. That it's just kind of a great basic little pale ale to show off hops. And um, I got hooked up through the Wisconsin Hop Exchange. The recipe stays the same as far as how much of each malt, how much of each hops, and the way that the hops vary from all the various uh, small hop yards that we buy from. The beer every, every couple of, maybe every month and a half or so, just kind of changes a little bit. Sometimes it gets a little hoppier, sometimes it gets a little bit more piney, sometimes it gets a little more, you know, fruity. And the whole point is of that beer is just to kind of, uh, to really show off what our local Wisconsin hop farms are doing. The Driftless is just really hoppy and there's good dry hop flavor. Um, the beer is, you, you still get that good malt backbone, but the, the hop character, it's so aromatic and flavorful it's just it's a great beer especially on a hot summer day after mountain biking for a couple hours it really hits the spot yeah the rye beer is um you know i had always read and oftentimes been told that it's a bad idea to just put raw grains into a mash you know and i think in a lot of cases that's probably true but I also definitely wanted, it's kind of a, an ongoing experiment with uh, trying to use raw flaked rye in a, in a beer. Um, and so it's, got, it's a pretty high percentage, it's about 18% or so I think, uh, rye. So yeah, it's a lot. And uh, I really wanted to not just make a beer that had rye in it, but I wanted to make a rye beer. I wanted it to really be the kind of the upfront. Um, and there's been multiple Variations. I think we're on. I think we're total. We might, I think we're on version three right now. Version four are currently in the tank. It's a lot of fun just to kind of see what you get out of it. Thank you guys very much for uh, coming in. Uh, feel free to swing by the raw deal and enjoy some real deal beers. Please come down and see us. Try one of our beers. Explore the town. Get to know us, and uh, then have another one. Hi! If you like what we do here, you can click up above where we have t-shirts and other merchandise for sale. You can also show your support by subscribing or liking the video. You can also click down there where we have our next episode. I'm going to shut up right now for a word from my sponsors. Lazy Monk is a popular brewery located in downtown Eau Claire, Wisconsin. 
The family-owned brewery has fantastic beer, and their taproom's atmosphere is something to experience firsthand. We hope to see you there. Lazy Monk, a family brewery. The beer, the beard is definitely, a, and it's a little known fact, it's actually in the fine print. Um, and I probably shouldn't be saying this out loud, but there's an organization that actually regulates it. And you have to register with them. To register. And you have to register. Yeah, it's a fact. Don't, <laughs> don't put that in.